it. So she'll be putting us through um, wig making at the same time. I'll be walking around and be doing a couple of things too. But please, if you have any question, or mute yourself, ask your question. But if there's any background news and noise at any time, please, for the sake of the recording, please mute yourself. Okay? You can uh, once in a while pop your question in the um, in the box in the chat box. She will take time out to read it once in a while and see um, and then answer the question. But please raise your hand. It's easier for us to work with the challenge the people here. So um, now, lady, it's over to you. I'll be stepping out in about two minutes and I'll be back. I don't get a couple of things for people. So let's have fun today. And please, we have to complete the week today. So in three hours, I've told her. In that three hours that we have, that week must be completed because we are going to do styling next, next class. So please, let's quickly chat, 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 and get it started. Let's start, please. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Like um, Mrs. Titi has explained, my name's Annie, and I currently have a hair wig making business. So I'm going to just take you guys through how to make a wig. Um, I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible because we only have three hours. Like I was saying to her, if it, if I'm going to make my own wig, it doesn't take me three hours. It takes me more than that, but I'm going to try and break it down and make it as simple as possible so that it's done in three hours. Okay, so we all know this is our canva head. Canva head comes in different sizes. So if you're making wigs for yourself, it's better to measure your the circumference of your head and pick a canva head that's the same size in terms of centimeters or it's inches, sorry, in inches. If you're making it for other people, I've noticed that your 22 tends to be the size that fits most people. Some people may need to go up to 23. Some people may need to go down to 21. But I know I've made this for quite a lot of different people. And 22 normally is on point in terms of size. So um, the Canva head, you need your dome cap, please. Your dome cap also comes in. The some that do one size fits all. The some that do small, medium, large. I tend to use one size fits all because once you've made the wig, and with the sizing of the canvas head, it should just go to the shape of the person's head. But you can buy large, you can buy small, you can buy medium. So your dome cap is this type of spandex material. It's good because it stretches. So when you're making a wig, it will stretch out. If you pull it, it will stretch. You can make wigs with the netted ones. Um, they are good too as well. Or you can make wigs with a stocking cap. There's loads of different options. The reason why I wouldn't personally recommend the stocking caps because the stocking caps tend to rip. If, you, if you're sewing and you're pulling, you're brushing, before you know it, there's a hole in your wig and then you have to repair. So I think either use the stocking spander cap or you use the netted dome cap. Any questions? No, this is just a normal fund. The has like a whole in yeah, it. So I've got, um, I know this is quite big. I've got a large hand video, so this one will be your Um, Are you making it for yourself? Yes. Okay, um, do you, you do a large? A large. Okay, thank you. Actually, no, the medium is. Okay, so we're going to put, you normally put, see where it says your label? You, that's what you want to put at the back of your wig. And the back of your wig should be where your number is. So where your canvas head has a number, it does have a number, it's normally where it has this, this kind of a curvature. That's the back of your, the bit that would be the back of your wig. So that's where the number is? Yes, it's normally where the yeah. number is, yes. So that's the back. If your wig cap does not have a label, how you tell the back is the back normally has, um, it has kind of like a V shape at the back if it doesn't have a number. So if you check the inside and you can see the V shape in terms of the stitching, that's what you use for the back of your wig cap. Sorry, somebody's hands raised up. Shola? Yes, quick question. Uh, two comments, really. When you're facing the class, we can't hear you properly. <laughs> and okay, secondly, so my voice. No, when you're facing the class the other way, we can't okay. hear you clearly. And okay. secondly, would it be possible to show us how to measure the circumference of the head? Okay, perfect. All right, I'll take notes about when I'm facing the class. 
Um, to measure the circumference of your head, if you use a normal measuring tape, so you can start here. Are you on the canvas? Okay, <laughs> I'll show on the canvas. So what you do, use your measuring tape on your inches section, the bit that has the inches. You go to the back of your head, to the front, where your forehead is. Take it back and then measure it like that. That should give you, so this one is 21 because it is the 21 head canvas. So the circumference of this head is 21. So that's what you do. So if I was doing it on myself, I would do it like this. And then this is how I would measure the circumference of my head. So it's not to the side. No, no, it's like Yeah. So your circumference all around your head. So that's the circumference measurement. Ear to ear is here from your top of your ear to the other top of your ear. So that's what you would do if you were making a frontal wig, but we're gonna be doing closures today. But I guess this tutorial will take you on how to do frontals at a later date. But if you're doing a frontal, you would do your ear to ear measurements like this. Front to back is like this, all the way to the nape of your, your head. Can you see? So that's the three measurements you would normally do when you're measuring your head. Why would we need to measure from front to back? So if you are online and you are maybe purchasing a wig, a ready-made wig, okay. they would ask you to check your circumference, which is all around your ear to ear and your front to back to make sure that the wig would fit your head. So that's why you would normally measure. But because we are making ours ourselves, it doesn't really matter. But I just thought I'll give different types of measurements possible. Okay, thank you. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the cap on the head. I want you to stretch it as, as much as possible. I want you to align your two, these two lines of the front of the cap right at the front of the, of the canvas head here. So once that's lined up, I want you to push, if it's forward, please push it back. What you want to do is start the, front of the wig where your wig would start. The front of the dome cap, sorry, where your wig will start. So once you've put it there, I want you to pull, stretch it out as much as possible and take your T-pin. It's okay. Push, push it back a bit. Cause your wig normally starts. Yes. Your wig normally starts here. So you want your, your cap needs to start where your wig is gonna sit on your head. So your wig doesn't sit here, it sits here. So you need to start your cap here. So if you put it on the dome, on your um, canvas head around here. So this is, can you see, the wig would normally start on somebody's forehead like here. So one, I want you to put it here exactly. And if you can line up your two stitching in the middle, so this is the middle of the wig. If you can line up the dome cap right in the middle and just stretch it. Stretch it and pin like this. Stretch and then pin. Sorry. We've been online. Your head is very blessed. <laughs> so, so, see where your two station See where the two station is? Yeah. I want you to line up where your wig will start. I want you to stretch it and pin. Okay. Okay. So, I'm not sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So, put, when you're starting off, we're going to do the closure where you need to line up your dome cap where your wig will start. So, the front of your, your closure will normally sit at the front of your head there. So, you need to position your cap there. So just 
just do your front. We'll do the back in a minute. I just want you to do the two front pins and then I'll run up. We'll swap the back. Yeah, that's perfect. Yes, perfect. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, is so how, how many pins do we need to stick in at the moment? Just two. two. We'll come back to just two at the minute. Just two in the front around here on your dome cap. Okay. Um, once that's done, I want you now to pull the bottom of your dome cap. And once you've pulled it, I want you to just put a pin right in the middle center of the back of the, like the, just think of it like the nape of your head. So I want you to pull the cap right to the end, like the nape of your hair, and then put a pin there. Once you've secured that back pin in the middle of the hair, because everyone is on lunch. Yes. So it's better if the pin sits on the rubber band area of the wig cap rather than here. It needs to sit in this. This is where we'll be pinning. Okay, so once you've done that, I want you now to pull the side, the back of the of the wig, bring this here and pin it. So you're basically trying to make the wig cut as tight as possible. So you're going to pull the either side here and pin it. Can you see? So you, you're basically trying to stretch out the cap as far as it will go. So you pull this side here, pin it. My end of going more to front than Yeah, no, no, fine. So as soon as we pin it, it's not adjusting it, you can readjust and pull. It just basically needs to sit as tight onto the, the dome yeah. cap as possible. So I'm going to do my other side now as well. What you may find is that you're starting to get some laps here. So, yeah. so what you might find that you may be getting some gaps. So if you're getting a gap, I want you to just readjust your front. So what you can do is pull this fit, move the pin, pull it forward. Pin, pull this forward and pin. So what you're, what you're trying to achieve is you're trying to make the cap as tight as possible on the canvas head so that when you're sewing, it sews and it sews well. But if you make it loose, the wig, the wig will be very loose once you're finished. Excuse me, sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. I saw something like this shape. Is it this shape in front, supposed to be in front of the back on the cap? So this shape is supposed to be at the back of the cap. Okay, I, I guess I missed that. Thank you. No problem. Yes, that's perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So have to be on the same well, you are living home. Okay. Any questions? Sorry. Need to wash or move to wear? If you're getting any gaps, you can pull the back of your 
your calf up so that it's can you see it's tight on the on the for on the canvas head but i can pull it back so that if it doesn't matter if this is loose because when i will get tighter once we're sewing onto the wicker good, good. so i think everybody is ready is everybody ready with their cap is everyone ready yes okay can you just take a look is that um line far back enough i want you to push yours a little bit further back further back okay thank you so you can pull, grab the back of the cap and pull by the back of the cap so that it's a bit further back. How's Did everyone getting on? Done? Yes, this... footballer. Yeah. How about yep. now? She said that. Yes, perfect. Oh no, sorry. Please take it a bit back, a bit further back. Let it like sit right on top of the... So please, can you push your cap back a, a bit further back, the front of it, just the front? Do you mean me? Um, sorry, let me type the name. Perfect, yes, better now, perfect. Okay, I think everyone's good to go now. Yeah. So yeah. we'll take our closure. We're going to take our closure. So there's loads of different ways to sew your closure onto your wake up. But well, I'm going to show you how I'm now sewing my closures onto the wake up. I find that it's better so you don't get any bumps and your closure lays as flat as possible. So what you can do is if you fold your closure into the half and then you can mark with your pencil the middle, the middle part of your closure. So if you just fold it like this, line everything up. You line everything up. Okay, so I just took it out. I'm just gonna line. I'm going to line the closure up like this, right in the middle. Line everything up so I can find the middle, middle center of the the closure, and then I'll mark that with my white pencil. Does everybody come with a white pencil or something to mark this? So just mark the center. So as I showed them, you center it up. Join together, find the center of the closure and mark it with the inside with the um the white pencil. Uh, can, can you repeat that, please? Okay, so I want you to fold up your closure, find the center point of the closure right at the back. Okay. No, no, it's, it's a four by four, so it will be two either side to it. The reason why I'm not measuring is because closures come four by four, five by five, six by six. So if you fold in the middle, you always land in the middle point of the closure. So you, you do, it's only a frontal that I would advise you measure because you once you measure your ear to ear, you may have to cut off some of the closure off. So that's the only time I would do measurements with the measuring tape. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but if, Okay, I'm coming. So if it's just a closure, you can just fold in the middle. Once you've got your center point, so this is my center point here, I will mark that center point. Are we marking at the beginning of the closure or at the back? At the back. So you mark here at the back. back. I'm okay. coming. Yep, I've marked mine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um you still want to hold it, the length of the two by four. 
Is everyone okay? My cup crayon is not showing. Do you need the white one? Yes. Is everyone okay? Talk about long yes. ones at the end and shorter comes up in case they have different lengths. <laughs> okay, Auntie, I got it. <laughs> All right. Um, so what I do when I'm doing my wigs, I always do the closure first because I find it's easier to do the rest of the wig once the closure is done because this is your hardest bit. This can make or break your wig. So if this is not done properly, it doesn't matter how you sew your bundles because the wig won't look good. So once you've done your closure and your closure is fine, everything else is okay. You can stitch left, stitch right. It doesn't really matter, but obviously I will show you how to stitch properly and stitch well. Yes. So what I want you to do, take your center point of your closure and let, if you want to measure in this point, you can, to, be, to me, I can see the center of it is ready here. This is the center. So I want you to match up the center of your closure to the center of your wake up. So your wake up should end up like this. And then pin, pin up your center at the back. So right now, I pinned, can you see where I pinned my closure in the center? Yeah. So do that. now to, to in order for the clothes to lay as flat as possible you need to pull it as tight across your wig cap as possible because if it's not tight it will end up doing this but whereas we want it to lay as flat as possible in order to do that means you have to really stretch your closure so, so where sorry where does the um you know the extra um what's it Extra lace, where does this sit in proportion to the where they were coming? So by the time you've pinned in the middle, your lace should look like this just over your cap. Just you over. Okay. My cap is still underneath there. Okay. Wow. If we need to readjust, we can readjust, but let's just start with this as it is. Here. No, no, we don't do the front yet. We're doing the side, the back side. So you're gonna do your this side first. You're gonna pull it across, make it as tight as possible. It will look like it, it wants to rip, but it's not gonna rip. So you just pull it. Once you've gotten it as tight as possible, I want you to pin it, pin it into, pin it onto the wig. <laughs> Yes, do the back first. We'll, we'll get there, don't worry. <laughs> so, sorry, let me just. So, I'm going to pin. I'm pulling my back and I'm pinning it where it's tight. So, I pin the first back. I'm going to do the second back now. <laughs> Thank you. 
So once you've done that side, you're gonna do this side of the wig. You're gonna pull that again. Yeah, pulling and pinning. Yeah, do the other side. Once you've done that first side, do the other side of your back. Pull and pin. Yes, yeah, so we're still doing the back side. So pull and pin, pull and pin. Yep. Right now, I have my back side pinned up. Can you see? I have three pins on the back side. I've pulled it. So has everyone got their back pins? Yes. Okay, so now we're gonna do the side. So what your back is pinned, so you now have this is free. So what you're gonna do is try and position this as close as possible to the edge of your band and pin it. Okay. <laughs> what you want to do is bring, sorry, hold on. Okay. So what I want you to do is hold your lace and level up. So the beginning of your lace land where your cap ends. You see? Okay. So you're pulling it so that it lands. Yeah. The, the end, so where your hair, where the hair starts on the lace, needs to land right on the edge of your cap. So it should end up like this. You're matching up the beginning of your, okay. you're matching up the beginning of your wig where the hair starts with the edge of your cap like this. Okay. But while you're doing that, you're still pulling it to make sure that it's flat as possible. So I'm literally pulling it, I'll pin there in the front. Yeah. So you see, that's where my hair starts on my lace. And this is where my cap starts as well. So I'm pinning it right, making sure it lines up. Then I pin it. I don't pin the hair. I pin in front so that I don't damage the lace that actually has the hair. So I'm securing it on the excess lace. I'm securing it here. I do that side. Then I come over and I stretch it and do the other side. So you see the, the closure is flat. So I've done that one side. I'm about to do this other side. I'll pull it across, line it up with the other, where the hair is and the cap is and then- If it's not doing that, do you have to start all over again? 
Um, so if it's not doing that, you may need to bring your the back a bit forward. So you might need to unhook the back, bring it forward. So as it la as it stands, you should have start of your lace matching your start of your cap and pulled across so that is nice and flat like this. It shouldn't be like this. It should be flat. Yeah. We don't want it like this. We want it to be like this. Once you cut it off, it's flat. No. Okay, do it. Try and pin here. So if you pin close the hair, that means it's What you're going to do is. Pull, yeah. So, see, just pull the end pin on yeah. your excess leg. On oh, your excess leg. Yes. Yeah, because okay. you don't want to damage anything oh. that has hair. Yeah. Okay, so this so make a hole there. That one is another challenge where you have to fix. So, you always pin on your excess leg. So, if you make any mistake, oh, okay. then you're not going to be that far. Okay. So, now it's going to be. Do this side and pull and make it as flat as possible. So that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I have a close for you, but I don't know if you want to. It's an old one, though. So I don't know. How's everyone online going? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so once you've pinned it, yo, I, I, this can work, but it's not good because it will make your wig bigger. So what you want to do is make it as flat as possible so that once you've finished it, your wig is not bigger than you expected it to be. This can work, but we want this. This is what makes a good wig, having a, the, a flat closure. So your thing should be like this, flat on your cap. <laughs> not flat. How the one getting on? Yeah. I yeah. am struggling. <laughs> You're struggling, okay. What's what's the issue? Show me. Um, so because my lace isn't wasn't lying flat, I'm taking all the pin out and I'm starting all over. Okay, so what you want what I'm gonna show you to do. Are you seeing me? Yeah, See if you can play this on your own head. Yeah, where your finger ends, that's where you should now put your on your Use your finger, take that same size measurement, put it on your cap, on your wig canvas, and then pin it there. Because you're making it for yourself. So you need to think, where do I want my wig? I like my wigs to start here. Some people like it here, some people like it here. So you decide, measure from here to where you want it, and then bring that to the thing so that you have a quick match. You can also do front before you do back, but that's a bit more difficult. Hence why I'm showing you should do back first. How are you getting on, Josephine? You're good? Yeah. Good, 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 good. Sister Shola, how are you getting on? I'm trying. <laughs> we'll wait for you, no worries. So while we're waiting for um, Shola to get her closure done, we're going to start threading our needles because next thing we're going to put our closure on. So everybody, I want this is your thread. You need to use weaving thread because weaving thread is thicker than cotton sewing thread that I use for clothes. 
it's better to use the weaving thread because if you're pulling, you're brushing your hair, if it snags because the cotton, is, the um, thread is too thin, you have to kind of repair your wig. So it's better to use your weaving threads that you can get from the hair. So you can get them one pound, two pound, three pounds. I tend to buy this because I make a lot of wigs. So I tend to buy this. So what I want everybody to do is start threading your needle. Sorry, can you still use the for the needle? No, you use that. Yes, you can use that. Oh. Um, I'll give you one thing to put it. This is only a straight one. A straight one. I don't know if we have any straight one. No, any idea one is okay. Okay. That's okay. not. So you can have there's different types of weaving needles. You can have your curve, which is what I like, or you can have a straight. But I don't know if we have any straight with us today. But curve, you would just as you would thread normal sewing needles for clothes, you thread it. You can make it as long or as short as you want, but I, I noticed that once the longer you make it, the more tangled it gets. So I like to go for like a medium length, which is, around so what i want you guys to do is two needles of threads yeah so and i'll give you another one so around this length should be okay Sorry, Josephine, we can't really see you. So maybe if you bring your camera down. No, I was getting my thread. That's why you can't oh, see. Oh, you're using your, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, that length is fine, but that length is better. So I want you to do two needles of this. Yes, so you knot it, you double it up and then knot it at the end. The smaller the knot, the better, but it still needs to be a knot that's not gonna become loose. So try and make it not small, but secure. Okay, so after this, I have to double it again. No, 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 yeah. that's it. That's it. When I mean double, I mean pass it through and then make it, okay. you know, some people when they're sewing, they do half, okay. they put it through and do a half, okay. half thread like this, and then they go. But I want you to double it all the way through, right to the end. Okay, so another trick is you can put your needle on your, on your block head so it doesn't get lost. Does it have to be as big as that? No, no, no. I just prepare for That's the small one. It's quite, it's, I, I like it when I'm back to like the ends. Just not like stitching, but if it's general, it's going to be hard. It will make it slow for you to do. So we're going to do our two threads. And then we'll start sewing down our closure. Sorry, I haven't pinned my closure down. That's why it's looking like this. Do we, do we have to double the thread or are we using a single? Yeah. Double as in like this? Yeah. Yes, double please. So double it, the strand before you put it through. No, no, put one strand through and then bring it and Round. double. Okay. Yes. So once you've doubled it, I want you to knot it a small but secure knot. So you want to make it small so that it doesn't cause, it's easier to hide if it's small, but you also want to make it secure. So don't make it too. So I tend to do, once I've tied, I tend to do this to try and see if it's going to come undone. If it's not coming undone, then I'm good. I'm ready for me. <laughs> this is too long. If you want to do more than three, two needles, why you can do that. Somebody has their hand up. Hi, I'm just Hello. waiting patiently. I didn't want to interrupt you. That's oh, why. Sorry, I interrupted. Sorry. Hello. Hi. I was just um saying I caught up really late. I'm at work, so I'm just gonna be watching today. I'm okay. part of the class, so have I missed a lot? Um, no, we've only gone through um putting our dome caps on the the wig on the canvas head, and then. And um, putting, securing our closures, we're about to sew it on now. So you'll be able to watch everything on the recording anyway. So you've not missed much, but um, I'm sure right. I...
the recording. If there's any bits that I've missed out, I can do maybe a separate recording that Sister Titi can merge in with the two. We'll find a way to if there's any bits that it's not quite clear or any bits that's missed. I can I, I don't mind doing a separate video and sending it later for her to add in. Thank um, you. Okay, so everybody do do three needles. <laughs> So you can do as many needles as you want, but we'll start off with two. Um, Shola, how are we doing? I've done two needles. You've got two, okay. All right, so everyone is good with their closure and they're ready to start sewing? I'm going to be watching from here and I can't find my needle, so I'll just watch from that oh. and I'll repeat, okay. I'll complete and do it myself. Okay, um, all right, that's fine. So I'm going to do the last pinning of my closure because I haven't done that yet. Okay, Charles, okay. Okay, I'm coming. So what another thing you may want to do is secure your the middle of your closure with the pin. The middle of the, like the sides, where you see the side here, you want to secure that with a pin as well. Okay. So if it's not tight, I'm going to make mine tighter. I'm going to stretch it out, pin it, and then. Quick question. When you are pinning the, putting the needle in, are you pinning down the hand? Or are you just putting it straight into the closure? No, straight. I'm putting it on the perimeter. Can you see uh, when you have closures, you have somewhere that's a bit thicker than the rest? Yeah. I put my pins in here because if this is damaged, that's fine. But if you damage the actual lace in the middle, you have now an issue that you have to resolve. So always try to use this parameter because the parameter is doubled up with extra lace to make it thicker. So always pin on your okay. parameter rather than in the actual lace. So we've pinned, but what you what you will notice when we start sewing is some you may have to repin and stretch out some parts. That's what happens when you start sewing the closure. Okay. So is everybody good to go? So I want you to. I'm in a class, so you can start sewing from the front, but it makes it difficult to stretch. So I like to sew from the back. So I'm gonna take my first needle. Add, I'll show you guys at the back. I want you to go in. See where you marked the middle of your closure at the back. Go in, but through the closure, not through the cap. So you're gonna do a quick stitch inside. Oh, 
so I've gone into the closure. I didn't go into the cap, so I can still, if I lift it now, it's not secure to the cap. So if you see, it's, if you see, it's not secure to the cap. So I want to hide my knot. So I'm hiding my knot underneath the closure. So that's why I've only sewn into the closure, not the cap. I'm coming. So I've sewn. Did everyone get that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I've sewn. I put my first needle in, and I'm going to. Once I've put my first needle in, I'm going to just hang it on. Put it in the back of the. I'm now going to do my second thread right next to where I've just sewn that first one. I'm going to sew this second one too as well into the closure, not the cap. So what you're going to have is one needle will be doing the left side, one needle will be doing the right side, and then you bring it all to the front. <laughs> Don't worry, you're coming. We're coming. So what you're doing... Quick question. When we're inserting the needle, are we inserting from under? Yeah, inserting from the top? Under, because you're trying to hide your knot. So you're hiding your knot underneath your closure. Okay. So you're sewing under into the, the frontal, the closure, sorry, and you're bringing it out. So I have now, I'm in the closure, but you can't see my knot. My knot is not showing on top. It's hidden, it's hidden underneath. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, so where you've marked mm -hmm. or find the middle, insert it. Sorry. Insert under the closure. Yeah, not into the cap, just the closure so you can hide the knot under the closure. Okay, so the left one goes there. You put it here. I put the second one too. On right the, next to it. Right next to it. Okay. So you're going to, uh, you leave it now. So you just pull it. And you hide it, or, and then you add your next one right next to it. So you're adding the needles right next to each other, the knots, so that you start now and then do work like this. Okay. You have to use both needles. Like, are you inserting two needles or one? Two, two needles right next to each other. So they should be right, right to the left. There should be no space right. between the two of them. So you're sewing and you sew the other one right next to it. There should be brother and sister right next to each other. Right. Twin, okay. Twins. Right. There should be twins right next to each other. Right. Okay, we got nothing. So you know, you guys can always, let me show you something. You can sew it and move the remaining head to cover it so that you don't have to. Sorry, I did. I put it like this. Okay, that's fine. Yes, on top. Yeah. So just make sure that it's tight in the middle so that it doesn't get bumpy. So has everybody got that? Yeah. So next. You decide which side you want to go in. I will go on my. You can so, go on your. Up sorry. Me. Now that we've inserted the needle, we've only done it once for both needles, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to show you now what to do. So I'm saying you make a decision. You can go right or go left, but you both meet right at the front. So I'm taking my first needle. I'm going to go left. I'm going to go into my cap. So the needle is coming from inside the wig now, but inside the closure, I'm going into the cap through the closure and out again. I'm doing a blanket stitch. Does everybody know what a blanket stitch is? A what stitch? A blanket stitch. You know when you're mending your clothes, you just go in, out, in, out, in, out. That's what we're gonna be doing, a blanket yeah. stitch. Uh, okay. Okay. So you're gonna sew, you can make it as close together or as far apart as you want. It's better if it's, it doesn't have to be right next to each other, but it needs to, if it's closer, stitching, it will be more tight and more secure. If you make it really loose, it won't be as secure as it can be. So the tighter the, the stitching, the, the more, the duration of the stitching, the longer the wig will last. So you don't have to make it right next to each other like you did with the two needles. You can do stitching, leave like a finger gap, do another stitching, leave a finger gap, do another stitching, or you can just air mark, eye it however you want to eye it. So you can do your stitching as close or as far apart as you want, but don't make it too far. So I'm going to, I'm going into the cap. 
into the closure and then out again. And I'm only sewing on the perimeter. You see where the thick bit of lace around the perimeter. Let me get, sorry, let me get another closure. Yes, we're going to cut now. Yes, we're going to cut now. Sorry, I'm coming. Go from under the, the lace and then into the cap. Yeah, so you're going into the cap mm -hmm. through the lace, into the cap through the lace. Oh, into the cap through the lace. Yes, yes. The yes. The lace. Not in it. No, you're not in it. Just keep going. No, the blanket is true, true. You're doing the other. Oh, okay. you're going it. So go into the cap. Yeah. What's the uh, yeah. best one between yeah. one to another? You can decide. You can decide. Yeah. Okay. We're not knotting any no. We're just going in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, and attaching it to the cap. Yes, Sister Shala. Okay. So we go from the lace. Yes. To the top into the. Then do we pick the cap? Yes, so what you're going from the lace into the cap, into the lace, out again, into the cap, into the lace, out again, into the cap, into the lace, out again. So what I want you to do is make sure you're only sewing on this part of the closure, only on this round part. Don't go anywhere here, just out here around the perimeter, around the perimeter. And the reason you can tell it's a bit more thicker than the inside of the thing. So only sew here. Yeah, I know, I know. How do we know we're not picking um, the material? You can you can tell <laughs> it's it's the, no, the wig head itself. You know it's sitting on the lace. The cap is sitting on the wig head. Yeah, 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 yeah. How so, do we prevent ourselves from going too far in picking the? You see? Oh, it's a bit. But this is, let me see if I can take this off here. There's a stitching. Can you see where there's kind of like a demarcation between the? the perimeter before you meet the actual lace. I don't know, the camera is not Yeah, going. I get that. So that's what how I'm you can is, um, You know the, the wig stand? Mm -hmm. How do we make sure we're not, the needle doesn't go too far into the wig stand and we're just picking the cap? It doesn't matter. It, it, it's hard to do because I have done that when I've taken the wig and the stitching into the cap. It doesn't matter. It's fine. You just quickly just kind of stitch off what you've sewn in because it's canvas it's um because it's canvas it's you're bound to sometimes stitch into your uh, okay thank you another method you may do is you can wrap it around with clean film if you wrap it around with clean film if you sew into your cap you're just picking up the clean film you're not picking up your actual head that's a bit late now <laughs> It's a bit laid down. <laughs> when you're really getting into the groove of making your wigs, you can wrap your okay. head with clean film or a plastic bag, and then you can, or sellotape, you can sellotape all around so that you don't damage it. But sometimes you are bound to kind of get just maybe a stitch or two. I think I've only... Any questions? Okay, I'm going to leave you to stitch. So, so you... the essence is to pick the cup, not... The nigga must not touch the dome. Yes, it's possible that it can be. Yeah, but so what, what do you do? Because it's touching mine. If it, at the end, end, we'll sort it out at the end. Okay. So, so I can't handle the two at the same time. That's why I'm hanging. No, it's fine. So better so it doesn't get tangled is to hook it into your cap. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, you can have a no, 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 no. I searched it up before I came. I said that you know, um, <laughs> maybe a, a English blanket is the problem. I think I'm going in and out like this. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. So do you pull you very tight or once you do it or I Wait a minute, I just sort of out. 
You just try and hide that and then she's going to push that in. So I keep going to the front like that. We keep moving to the front. Yes. So we can't stop midway. No, no. Move it all the way to the front. I think she wants. Okay, so I'm coming. So I'd, although I did say we should do our stitching close together because we have limited time, let's try to stitch fast. But I'm sure everybody's stitching well. Hey, how's everyone getting along? I think I need to stitch my <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> Can she be doing the other side? And it will yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If you can manage to do that, then yeah. Blanket stitch. Blanket. Mm -hmm. You got it right. You got the blanket stitch. Yeah, it is. I, I made sure I researched it <laughs> before I came. Because I know the, the stitching I do, and I remember when I did um textiles in school, it was called a blanket stitch, but I wanted to double check before I came and gave you the incorrect information. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. 
So the more practice you make, the neater your stitching will get. Like right now, mine are very neat, but that's because I've been doing wigs for since 2014. So it's a lot of practice and a lot of trial and error. So don't expect your stitching to be nice and neat, but as long as it's secure, then that's fine. Because at the end of the day, your closure will cover whatever you stitch. I think you are. <laughs> Can I just show you? Okay. Hold on, I'm coming. I'm almost done. If you talk to the listing of the cap, so how do we take it from just right to the bottom? Yeah, just take it right to the bottom. Take it to the edge. So take once you, if you're stitching and you're near the edge, just take your stitching right to the edge of the cap. I'll show you what to do when you get to the edge. Um, yeah, that's fine. So just stitch it. Maybe do a close, close stitch here. I'm yeah. making knots. No, no, don't, don't make a knot. Okay. Don't make a knot. Just take it, your stitch right at the end. I will show you what to do. Because you're, you're ending your thread at the front of your wig. So you need to make it as neat as possible. So just take your stitch into the front of the wig. I will show you what to do, how I do my, how I tie it off and I make it look neat and discreet. Okay, you know, I normally do most of my work in my lap. No, because it, it wants to be How's everyone getting on online? Thank you. 
If your hair is getting in the way, you can pin it up on top so that it's out of the way. Mine, because it's curly, it's getting quite in the way. So I've pinned it up out of the way, out of the way so I can see my closure properly and I can see where I'm stitching. This is the hardest bit of the, what I find to be the hardest bit to do. Once this is done, everything else is pretty much simple. Hello. Hi. I just want to ask a question. Is there any techniques to make the um, what you're doing now flat? That's sewing the the front. Is there any techniques we can apply to make it flat? Make it flat. Um, yeah. What do you mean? Like so, it's not bumpy because sometimes when you make wig and put the the top you're sewing on it, it mm -hmm. comes out bumpy. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. If the way I'm teaching you now, it shouldn't come out bumpy because okay. if you make it, um, we've not made the stitching. The stitching is quite close together. Once, okay. we, we sure, once we lay the hair down, it won't come up bumpy. If it's bumpy, then we didn't we didn't go for it properly. But okay. I've, the way I've the way we've stretched the closure will ensure that the closure lays as flat as possible. Okay. This stitching is the stitching I use for all the wigs that I do. The wigs are always laying flat, so this, I don't think we should have that. So just make sure you stretch your closure as I've shown you. And your stitching, as I've shown you, don't do any knotting. The reason why it shouldn't be bumped because we're not knotting anything. We're just passing the needle through, passing the needle through, passing the needle through. Um, okay, thanks. The hair now on your closure should help you cover it. Once you do the styling and the, you should be fine. It shouldn't be bumpy. Okay, thanks. No problem. Just let me know if you're ready to, if everyone's finished. Finish both sides or one side? Both sides, both sides, please. <laughs> both sides. I finished, I finished yeah. both sides. You finished, just start doing oh, threads. That's a miracle. <laughs> if you finish, start doing um, quite a few threads because we're going to need loads of threads okay. on the bundles. So just start prepping your threads. If you finish, start prepping your threads. I think a lot of people are still sewing their closure. I'm still sewing the first side. Me too, don't worry, me too. <laughs> I'm showing the second side. So once, once you finish, just start prepping the needles so everyone is done. Because I notice when you're doing your wig and you've not prepped your needles, it can break, break your flow. Once you're in the flow and you're like, oh, I have to not do needles. So prep your needles and your threads and then we'll wait for everybody else to catch up. So when we get to near the front, we should stop. Stop because I'm going to show you what to do to because you're at the front, you don't want any knots at the front, you want to make it as discreet as possible. So, I'll show you a little trick that I do. So, just um, just once you're there, stop and just do your needles, and then I'll come back and explain that section. Trying to make this neat because I'm doing all the stuff this way. Yeah. I'm trying to make this neat because she's doing the stuff this way. Okay, that's it. Yeah. It's like I'm not used to. I like making my really, really tight. 
To further elaborate from the person who asked about Bumpy, when I do my, because like I said to, uh, um, to Mrs. Titi, when I do my wigs, I don't take three hours. I do my stitching like they're right, right next to each other, like twins. So I do that all from the back, all the way to the front, and my wigs are never bumpy. So if you've done it how I've told you to do it, you should be fine. Um, so me, I'm even struggling now because in me, I want to do it close together, but I have to kind of spread it out because we don't have enough time. So can you still go back to do more? You can go back and, and so if you get home and you decide that you want to tighten it up, you can just pack the closure up and, and then just go back in again. Just make sure you're hiding your knots so you, it's not you don't have any hot knots out in the front. The front is where you need to make your stitching as discreet as possible. At the back, you can have as many knots as you want at the back. But in the front, you want to make sure that it's nice. There's no knots, so everything can kind of just cover each other and lay flat. No, no, it's fine. It's right. It's fine. Um, as long as you've made it close enough, yeah, that's perfect. That's fine. It's just I, the way I like to, I like to kind of make my own. No, it's just for practice. I think for future reference, um. Curved needle is the best because I have one curved and Definitely. I have one straight. <laughs> yeah, somebody here wants a straight needle, so it's really depending on you. I know people that like straight needles. I know people that like curve. I prefer curve because it just makes the movement simpler. Yeah, the curve one ma makes life much easier. Um, did you say you have a closure? No, no, no. I just lying down. Yeah, because I can notice if you finish the wig, I can always kind of help you remove this and add a new one on top so that it blends. Oh. So, yeah. if you finish the wig, okay. I'm most likely going to have to bring it in. Some of their things. <laughs> okay. How's everyone getting on? Second time. Uh, I almost finished my second one. Your thread needles, please. So can I use the smaller ones now? Or yeah, you can, see yeah you can use the smaller ones. So if we want to buy um wig um thread, is there um sometimes they put some kind of figure that that's how heavy the thread needs to be, so you don't buy the wrong one. If it's not written like a wig, um, wig, uh, weave, uh, thread. Um, I'm not sure, but I always buy mine from the hair store. So if you go to the hair store, some of them have like a um, kind of like a packaging on it. It will tell you the thickness of the. Yeah. So what should the thickness be? I'm not sure. So that's what I'm saying. If you go to the hair store and you buy one and you have the thickness, you can now use that thickness as a reference. Say if you want to order on Amazon or you want to order. Oh, okay. I saw you. Just All right, thanks. From, from the hair store, you can now use the packet. It will probably tell you like 35 millimeters times. Then you can now use that reference to, to buy it. But I tend to just always buy in the hair store and I tend to buy big ones so that it lasts me long. Okay. Um, so I'm not, that technical knowledge I do not have, but um, I'm sure the hair store will have something that has that information for you. So has everyone got the two stitching done or we're still waiting? Still waiting. Okay, no problem. Okay, we've still got some time. So, yeah. yeah, if if we need if we need um any extra supplements, I can help to do that. Okay. 
You have to leave it too. Okay, that's fine. She, the, she said the recording will be available, but if there's anything that may have been covered and it's still in her she will let me know. Thank you. Do something for that. Let me know when everyone's done. Could everybody hear? Could hear so okay. Not quite. Sorry. Did you say are we done? I'm asking how where are we on the online. How are we going? How are we getting on? Um. So I've done one side. Okay. I'm just um. Just started the other side. Okay. Somebody sent a message to me that said, uh, like a contact with someone that hasn't become on a text message. Send me suspicious. I was yeah. So, but somebody had it. I head. thought it was, you're going to get a whole foot. Have you swept the house? When are you? No, you go back before you go. Did you? Do you have? Oh, I almost wanted to fill that from online. Just go on. You just fill all your details and everything. You're not doing any contact tracing again, okay? No, it's ended. Yeah, they made it. I mean, just send it. That's why we made it. You're not doing any contact tracing again. Even if you have it now, you can still go to work. You just use Facebook. But in my school, they will tell you that you shouldn't. You should just stay back and put it for five days. Before it was longer days, I stay back. What else do we need to do? Um, as many as probably do like 10. If how many do you have? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do, eight. All, do all your needles. Do all your needles. How many do you want um, to do? Some all your needles. If you, you only have three. How many do you have? I have some here. Yeah, okay, do, do, do all. If you have all, I normally do all my needles. Like if I don't use it, I always keep it for the next week. Okay. So maybe do five or six because okay. you're going to need. Quite a few. I'm just waiting for those who are still showing their second part, half of the closure to finish, so I can show you how to finish off the stitching, and then we can move on to sewing the bundles. No, no, there's some, there's a few more people. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. You Me myself, I'm still so, I'm sewing my second one, but I was I don't mind leaving showing people what to do next and leaving mine. Left hand side. Okay, that's left hand. Side. Yeah. When you say the second one, it feels funny. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, my second one is even finer than my first. <laughs> mm. well, I want to say that's because you've got the practice. Yeah, you've got the finer, better. My first wig was, I did my first wig four times because it was just going wrong. I had to undo, did it again, undo, did it again. And then I, I got it right on my fourth attempt. So it takes it takes practice. So <laughs> <laughs> you you're doing better than me when I did my first one. You're doing a lot better than me. That's why I said to myself, I'm not going to buy anything. Yeah, I already marked myself. I'm going to do it like five times. <laughs> <laughs> I've marked myself. I probably did like five times. Like right? that's <laughs> right. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. You'll be better than our teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so you have somebody to see me. Oh my god. Okay, we're, we're learning from all her mistakes, that's why. A quick question Does the wig cap the color matter? 
Um, yes and no. Like if you're doing blonder, like light blonde, bright blonde, it's better to use a cream light blonde cap so that it blends. You don't have um, like if you were to lift up the hair, like my hair is now. If I was to lift up like that, if you use the black and have blonde, you can see the black. But if you use a blonde cap, it blends the hair. So I'll say if you're using doing blonde, to uh, use your cream dome cap if you're using if you're doing brown hair black hair normal even like darker like even this i have a black cap so just try to what i try to do is if i'm doing a darker color i do a black dome cap if i'm doing a lighter color that's going to be really bright i do a cream dome cap and now they've started doing flesh color like a brown flesh color dome cap so you may want to look out for those as well because okay. i see that they give you like flesh dark skin color so that it blends it okay. looks like Thanks. So there's, there's different options. How are we getting on with the stitching of the second side? By the time we are revamping, mm -hmm. which day? So what happens to the cap? When you, when like if I want to change my shoe, I'm still going. Uh, and I don't want the black oh, cap to show. Excuse me. Keep going. I'm so what happens um the way i'm going to teach you you shouldn't have any black cap showing okay the way i'm going to teach you so you'll be okay even i based on my wigs i can take off the closure i'm doing new closure on top of it just how i do and i don't touch anything else so the way i'm showing you you'll be able to if you if your closure starts bolding there's a simple way to undo your closure and put a new one back on it oh, that'd be great <laughs> I do quite a few closure replacements, frontal replacements. So this method, is, that's why I like doing it this way because it's easier to, to still do it and still, if you need to replace your closure, replace. So how's everyone getting on? Are we nearly finishing the second section? Nearly. Okay, let's, let's try and speed up. Yeah, how's it going? Not bad. <laughs> so with your wig stand, you can always move your head if you need to. You should be able to do it in the way you can rotate your head. If you need to push it like this, you can bring it forward. So, but I think <laughs> Susan has already showed you how to do that. Part. How's everyone going? So we need. I don't say. Are you Okay, I'm gonna give us five minutes to finish our stitching. Because we need to, we need to move on. If you wanna have a complete wig by three p.m., we need to move on.
How's everyone getting on? Because we have extra heads. Yes. 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 The closure by now. Are we done and dusted? Yeah. Just a bit more. Nelly okay. there. Uh, you might need to help me hold the camera for this bit. I'm going to show them what to, how to um, close off the closer stitching. I'm also on the group. So if you have any questions after the training you can always just drop the question in the group and i'll answer what's your name on the group my name's annie okay thank you <laughs> Don't mind this lady. First timers. You can't rush. You can't rush good work. And as she said, anything worth doing is worth doing well. Learn for the first time. <laughs> so when we get to the, the front, how far should we finish it off? Take it right to the edge of the cap where your, your closure finishes. I want you to bring it right to the end. Okay. Like take it right up, like sew it right onto the edge. Let me show you. Like right here, I've done the size. You see, my last stitching is literally here at the edge of the cup. Okay. Oh, God. This is what I want. Actually, I have one of these. So I get my own other because of your book. There's they should have first day for the church in it. And is my right hand. Sorry, just had a little accident on one of the stands. Oh, it's my 
Can't see my face now. Um, Annie. Yes. Uh, just a quick question. I want to find out what is the average number of bundles of hair you need for whole week. Um, it depends on the style you're doing. If you're doing a short um hair, you can get away with two bundles two bundles and a half because what tends to happen is when you buy hair the shorter the length the more thicker the bundle is so you can get more in but once you start getting to your eight your 20s your 22s your bundle tends to be smaller so you may need to get at maximum once your your length is over 20 you need three bundles to be able to make a full wig you can use so anything two. less than 20 Anything less than 20, you can use two and a half, three. If you're doing 10s, 12s, 14s, you can do two. I've done a wig, a 20 wig with two bundles, but it was hard to do. And the hair wasn't, it wasn't the best because the hair wasn't full. It just looked really flat on the person because the person didn't get enough bundles, but it's possible. So I would say um, 18 downwards, no, so 16 downwards, you can do two, two and a half, um, 18 or push, you need at least three bundles. And then also, it also now depends on your closures. If you're doing five by five closure, you can do less bundles because five by five stretches on yeah, longer. One line. And then you're six by six, and then even your frontal. If you have a frontal, you can only do two bundles because you'll be able to get two bundles in because your frontal will take here, and then it's just doing your back. And two, what is the back size of? What's the best size of closure to get? Is it the five by five, six by six, or four by four? Um. Again, I'm going to say it depends. It depends on you. Some people, and I need a plaster. Some people, um, it depends on them. If you want to be parting here, 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 or you don't want the maintenance of using the frontal, I would suggest a five by five or a six by six, because a six by six will span here. So that means you can part it in the middle, you can part it here, you can part it here, but it's not a frontal. If you want to yeah. obduce, you need to do frontal or 360. If you just want middle parting, side parting, you're not going to do anything else. You just want every day, then a closure, four by four should be okay. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Inside the box or inside there. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll say when you're buying it. Oh, okay. But your bait, no, now you have two by fours as well. Some people do two by fours, which is it's just two. You can do two by four or two by six. When you're talking four by six, it just means you have longer uh, parting space at the back. But yeah. I prefer, if it's not four by four, I'm now starting to do five by five because I just like having quite a lot of parting space. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's got one. So, yeah. It doesn't want to clump. Wake up. I think there's a few in there. It's in there until you tell me it's in there. Sorry, don't make this thing break. Okay, how's everyone getting on? Have we finished our speaking? I brought clubs. Okay. Now that we're over that mishap, how's everyone getting on? Are we finished? Oh, are we fin are we at the at the at the mid at the front ready to close up our stitching? Yeah. 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 Y
What's happening? Talk to me, guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, 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 um, I I don't know. I'm not sure if my late Francis come forward enough to cover the cat it's, bar. It's, it's okay if it doesn't cover the cap, but we just need to bring it so it bring it, it's right at the edge of the cap. This is not so easy, but I've tried. Let me see. Um, one sec. <laughs> Let me see. Okay. That's right. Let me see the other one. But you've brought it right to the end. Yeah. Have I? I'm asking. Um, this side looks good. Let me see this this other side here. Which side? This here? The right, the right side. Let me see the right side. Bring it closer to the camera. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I think it should be okay. I think it should be okay. All right, so I've not finished mine, but I'll do that while you guys are doing your bundles. So what we're gonna do now, your thread should be, I'm gonna come and show you. Your thread should be here, right at the edge. You've done your last stitching. So what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna go back into the camera. I'm gonna use the camera for this. Yeah. Because it needs to be, because it doesn't have this in any matter. Yeah. So if you can see, bring it closer. My last stitching is right. And that should be closer. Yeah, right at the end of the cap. Can you see? So what I want you to do is go back into the cap on the edge. Can you see? back in so that your stitching is underneath the cap rather than on top of the cap. Can you see? So it's now see it. under. I'm, co I'm coming. Oh. Everyone got that? Not quite. So what you're just doing, you're just doing another stitch. Yeah. Don't let them see. And now we So showing. is the needle going fast into the... So um, your needle is into the uh, into the lace. So your needle as it is should be coming out of your lace. So what you want to do is you want to take it back into the cap by just doing another stitch back in like this and bringing it out so that your your rope is now underneath your cap. Mm -hmm. Have you got that? No, say that again, please. Why you're saying this again? Show I'll, them. I'll, I'll come to them. So <laughs> so I can't even I'm not finished that side. So as you started, your your need your thread should be coming out of your closure at the top. What you want to do is bring the thread into the cap so that your thread is coming out underneath your cap rather than through the lace. So you just take it and make another blanket stitch into your carpet like this. So what you're just doing is taking it in like that into the cap right at the edge and bringing it all the way through. So when you finish, your, your thread should be starting underneath your cap like this. So my thread right now is coming from underneath my cap, not my actual lace. So you see? Got that? So the, the, um... so I want so you to can you take the needle into the cap alone? Yes, just take it into the cap. So right now your thread should be coming out of your lace, but you want to take, put it into your cap so that it's hiding underneath your cap rather than sticking out from your lace, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So let me, come on, let me show them again. So you can see okay. your, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't mind the both sides. Okay. So right now, normally this should be here. Yes. So if it's here, you see how it's coming out of your lace? 
what you need to do is take it into your cap so that it hides the name in your cap. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. That's so what you're doing is just pulling, putting your thread back into your cap so it's underneath your cap rather than on so top of your cap. Is that clear? We're not cutting it here. We're just need that that first step. Has everyone done that first step? Yeah. Okay. Has everybody got that step? Yeah. So what you're now going to do is take your needle. You're going to push it through your cap, but not at the front. I'm pushing it through the cap around here. Because I don't want to knot it in the front. I want to knot it like around here so that the knot's not showing in the front. So I'm taking it from underneath the cap. I'm sewing just into the cap itself next to the front, next to the closure here. Can you see where my needle's coming out? It's not on the closure, it's right next to it. You can't say properly, but I think I get the gist of what you're saying. Yeah, so it's underneath my cap. I'm just literally taking my thread now, my needle now, and I'm taking it into the cap next to the closure, right next to the closure, and I'm taking it like... Okay. So I don't want... I want to knot it off. I don't want to knot it off at the front. I want to knot it off. So it should be next to your closure, not on your closure, next to it, like this. Okay. Push, pull yeah. that needle through. Once you pull it through, then take it back into the cap, like around here, back into your cap here. Put the around needle where? When the needle's out, bring it around back into your cap around here. Oh, that should now conceal your thread. One so you Sorry. Oh. Put the needle through the cap at the front here, and you're taking it, the needle back in again to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And don't repeat the same process, right? Yeah. So you've gone in, then you're going to come out again with your needle and bring the thread to the front. So I'm I'm basically concealing my my knot. I'm concealing it here rather than in the front. So I have to take my thread backwards so that my knot ends up here rather than in the front. Can you see? Okay, so you know the first insert that we've done, that's yes. come out. So what was the so second then, instruction? You now sew it again, so like next to it here, sew it in back in again here. So what let so me it show comes you. In, hold it, okay. It comes so in like from the back to the front. Yeah, so hold on, my, I've pushed my needle through the first time. What I'm gonna do is take it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right next to it, I'm sewing just right next to it, back in again to bring my needle back through to the front. So you can you see I'm just, it's right next to my first stitching. Okay, so how far to the front does it come out? You just push it through and just draw it all, your needle all the way through to the front. So your needle should be coming out from the front of your cap like this now. And then if I pull it, there you go. I've closed off my stitching. I'm gonna cut off my threads here. I'm gonna cut off my thread here. And then at the end of the wig, I'm gonna knot that. But my knot will now end up at here rather than in the front. So do you understand why I did it that way? No, say it again. So I've gone through with my thread mm -hmm. here and then back through yeah. here. And I've brought my threads here. So my thread now is coming from here out to the front. Uh, so when I'm knotting, I'm going to knot here rather than in the front. Oh, so that okay. you don't so does that mean that when we dip the needle in, we're not bringing the needle into the front, we're just dipping it and then pulling? Yeah, so you take it out, take it back in again next to it and bring it to the front. Is somebody so not I, done? I Let me show you okay. what I'm doing. So taking it from here, yeah. then I bring it out. Yeah, and then, then take, take it back, back in again. Yes, perfect. Did everybody get that? I know it sounds complicated, but it's just literally, you're bringing it, you just want to knot your closure here. So if you want to knot it here, how do you get from your front to here? You have to push your needle in and get there and then bring your needle back out. 
Does that make sense? So you just want to finish your stitching here, but you can't finish your stitching on the closure. You're, you're finishing your stitching just like next to your closure. So at the end of the day, I will cut this. When I finish my wig, I will now knot it at the end of the, right at the end when I finish my wig, I will knot it and my thread knot will be here rather than in the Okay, closure. that makes sense, yeah. So that's the way I consume okay. my knots. I always try to do my knots further back than in the front because even in the front it's easy. If your wig went like that, people can see knots. Whereas you don't want them to see any knots. You just want it to lay nice and flat. So I always take my needle back here and then bring it through. Once it's through with my scissors, okay. I make sure that I have enough to be able to close off my knots at the end of the wig easily. So I want not that to the very, very, very end when I finish my wig. So I want you to do that on both sides. So both of your, by the end, both sides should have to, like a thread here coming through like this. Coming through from here, from the back, through to the front. Yeah, I'm coming. Okay. Yes, in what are you thinking? Okay, you did the sign perfect for this one. You are muted. I'm not getting that inside command, but I, I'm not practicing, so I can't even complain. <laughs> I just didn't look. Shall I have any cup of tea on our behalf now? 
Yes. I've done well today, actually. <laughs> wow. Somebody is really being proud. Hey. See you. Let me see your sugar. Ah. Justin, that's good. You need a clamp. I don't have one, that's why. How did everyone get on with that? I know it sounds complicated, but it's the best way to keep your knots from the front and keep it at the back instead of in the front. So that, and also another thing about having your knots in the front, once you cut your closure, it starts frictioning with the front of your hair and you can make it a bit uncomfortable to wear. So that's why we try and put the knots here rather than in the front. So is everyone good with that? Sorry, did anyone, anyone need further clarification? It's just, I haven't finished my second side. I could show you again, but just think about if you're sewing clothes and you're about to knot off your threads, but you don't want the knot where you finish. You have to sew backwards to bring your knot backwards. So that's what we're doing. We'll be, but the thing is, you don't want to sew when your closure, your thread is out of your thing because you end up making, you need to take your thread on to under the cap. Then you can now take it backwards. If it's on top, you all you end up with is threading in the front like this. Whereas you don't want thread in the front. Yeah, so th everybody got that? Okay, we need to move forward and so before we go on, I want to just quickly take a quick picture here. Okay. And then and you <laughs> so for bundles, it depends on you. If you want same length, you need to kind of buy it's possible to buy 14, 16, and 18 and make them all the same length. That means you will do your 14 at the back because any hair at the back tends to be longer. So you do your 14 at the back. By the time it hits your back, it will be the same length as the 18 on the top. So you do 14, 16, 18 to make it the same length. If you want it in layers, you will do uh, 18 at the back, so it's longer, then the 16, then the 14, and then your hair will fall in layers. If you maybe have all the same bundles, it doesn't really matter. And I guess I'm just going to show you how to style it and how to maybe cut it into layers or, you know, level it out once you're done with the wig. But it just depends on you. If you want to do layers now, I would suggest you put your longest bundle at the back of the hair. If you want it all the same length and you have the same length of same bundle length then just fine if you have different bundles but you want the same length do your shortest at the back is that clear any questions okay we have one hour so we have to really do this fast so what i'm going to ask you guys to do quickly is where's the take out the first bun first bundle so by now you should have cut off your threads and you should have two threads hanging out in the front like this. So re-knot, if you have any thread left over from the previous needle, re-knot that needle because we use every little bit of thread here. We don't waste anything. Everything must go into the wig. Uh, I that the one layer. So I want you to open your bundles, take off any, anything like the, the wrappers, the the things holding it, any rubber bands, take off your closure. I mean, take off your bundle, sorry. You can double up your bundles. I don't double up on my wefts. I like to do single wefting, but it's up to you. If you want to do doubling, you can double. If you just open it out once, and then you can just sew through the two wefts. Everybody knows what a weft is, weft, weft. So well, if you want to do single, you can open it up and do singles and open it up again and then single weft it. So you de decide what you wanna do. If you wanna do weft, double wefting or single wefting, either way is fine, I can work with both. I like to single, so I'm going to single weft. So I'm gonna open up my closure up. I mean, my bundle up like this. So for your first stitching, I'll come to you. Sorry. What I want so, you to do uh, quick question, please. Mm -hmm. So I believe I have a 14 closure and then a 14 and a 16. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which should I have at the back? The longer one? 
Do you want a layered look? What do you think? I th I, I like layers because it gives the hair body, but I also like okay, one. okay, yeah. So you start with your sixteen. I'll be the sixteen. Okay. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna take the ends of your closure and see how do you, how do you pin me again? So that I know. Okay, so we need to move fast. <laughs> so you're gonna take the edge of your of your bundle. You're gonna pass the needle through inside the inside the weft, not around, in through the edge. Every time I start a new needle or a new line, I always take it through the weft like this. So I want to just open it up and take it in through. The Yes. Like yes, like that. So anytime I start a new needle, I always go through the weft while I'm around it. Can everybody see? So I want you to go through the weft and I want you to position it here. Because when you're doing the wig, it's better to start off with a round so that the wig kind of curves into the person's head. So I want you to start your wig here. Question, does it matter which side of the weft we, we use? No, it doesn't matter about which side of the weft just tend to make it secure. I always go through my weft. Every time I start off, every time I start a new weft, every time I start a new needle, every time I'm closing off, I always close off through the weft. So here, um, in the middle here, can you know where we pin? We know where we can't see properly. Sorry. No, it's okay. So here, okay, this is this is the back of my weft. I'm on the side now. I'm gonna start here. So it should be at least here. What's that the, side? Oh, the online people can't see half the time when I'm okay. You use the camera. Use the camera, use the camera properly. And see. <laughs> so here is where I'm gonna start my stitching. So I like to do a round before I now start doing across. So round because when you do round, it helps cough the hair when you put on the wig. It's nice and it gives it a round shape to the back of the wig. And so you should be starting. You should be starting like a round. Sorry. Is it possible for you to measure on somebody? It it doesn't no. matter. You just find here. You just you know any position. Wig? See the second pin here, anywhere above the second pin, don't go too far up, but say like around here. Okay. But on this, on this yeah. thing And trying to do the same width, the same width you're doing on this side, on the other side. So you're just doing like a semicircle around. So everybody got that? Okay, then how low does it have to be? Try and go above the, you see the double stitching here? Try and go above, just here. Above, above. it. Yeah, don't. If you do on here, it makes the wig tight. So try and always start your stitching from here or above. Okay. Okay. Above this. The they double, double, the double yeah. stitching. Yeah. in the middle of the up yeah, and yeah. down or so above. So either in the middle yeah. here or so above. So I put the pin here. Yeah. Either here or above. And then you can start just here. So I'm going to make sure you understand you don't sew this because you're just going to sew. So she has not started sewing. So I've not started sewing, so I'm just doing positioning. Is it, sorry. Is it here? Yeah, so here is the place to start. And then have like this. On top of it. Yeah. So do we, do we put the needle through the weft before we start anything? Yeah, so you put the needle through the weft. You've decided where you're going to start your stitching. I'm going to start mine here. So I'll put the needle to where what I'm going to do is go in mm -hmm. to the cap, out to the cap, and then I'm going to bring my needle like my thread like this and hook it, hook it into it like that. That's my always going to, it's always going to be my first stitching. It's always like that. Bring it off. Okay. Then I'll use the T pin to pin it in place so that it's not fidgeting. So. And my T pin goes here. Okay. 
Did everyone get that? Yeah. In okay. through your weft, into your cap, so, and then. So, sorry, are we are we using are we using the same um um method as when we did the closure? No, different methods. So you you go into your closure, into your weft. Sorry, into your weft, into the cap, mm -hmm. and then you just hook hook your thread like you're basically in out and then through your thread in the middle of your threads so where's my other thread oh, oh, think like that so what you're gonna do so shala do you want me to speak it in yoruba <laughs> <laughs> so it should end up like a loop can you see the loop bye through my is everybody seeing me through my thread into my a uh, weft into my cap and then through my my thread like this it should end up like this in the loop can everybody see ah okay and then through your loop once you've attached it once you've attached it, you can tip in it so that it does it's not coming up it's not fidgety can i see what i'm doing let me see can you see? Yes, yes. That's, it. that's it. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. So, how I like to keep my stitching secure is I always do my first one through the weft, and I do my second one through the weft as well. But I don't do I do a different method. So my second one will go through the weft again to secure it into the cap. And then I will now double, use my thread, do two loops over and bring it through. And then I can tee pin that as well. So that is now secure as well. So what I'm going to do now after that is follow this curve. The wig cap is very helpful because it already gives you the curve. So you don't have to make a curve. You just follow the wig cap around. Follow. So what you're going to do, end up stitching. So what you can use your T-pins. You can position it and T-pin it so you already know where you're stitching. Okay. Okay. T-pin. So that I know I'm going to do my stitching all around. So here. Yeah. So at the, once you've done your stitching, you should have your cap like this. Can I say something? Like yes. Um, it, to make this easier at times, that's why we have the marking, um, the sewing marking. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Don't so worry. that's. You, you can, can mark this, this bit. Is... You can mark all around <laughs> before even doing it. Let me do chest. So, how you're going to do your stitching, once you've done your two, you go through, you don't have to go, once you've done those two secure stitching, you can go around the weft now. So what we're doing, we're going into the cap, out to the cap. Okay, I need to see what I'm doing. Oh, come on, Mita. Through to your cap outside on top of your weft, around your weft, double knot it. And then bring it out. And then that's what the, the stitching I want you to do all the way around till you get to there. Then I'll show you what to do. Okay, but how do we ensure that our original, the edge where we're starting from is well secured? So by doing those two stitches through the weft, you've secured it already because you've stitched, you've stitched through the weft, not around it. If you stitch around it, it becomes loose. That's why I do my first stitching through the weft. Did you see the first stitching? Maybe she didn't have the first. Okay. Who is we, asking the question? Sister Shola. Yes, so, <laughs> so and make sure you pull tight, pull your thread tight so there's no there's no lagging thread, everything is nice and tight. So I want you to do that stitching all the way till here. Not so your 
through double knotting your double around double doing the thread around the needle twice once it's come up through the um, cap so now you're so i'm going to show you again i'm going with my thread into the cap from underneath bringing the, the needle out on the top taking the thread round twice all right and then pulling out and i'm pulling it making sure it's tight nice and tight so i'm going to do that stitching all around okay. mine, is, mine is not very tight yet make so it try tight. and make it tight if you don't make it tight your wig will be all loose and yeah make it tight so do that stitching all the rounds so you get here and you have literally one round of webs around your neck then i will now show you what to do so try and make sure that whatever how far you did it here is how far you do it here so don't do here and then take it here so if you're doing I like to do this. I like to use my fingers. If I'm catching okay. this width here, I need to make sure that this is the same width I'm using here as well. Question, are we doing two needles like we did before or just um, the one? No, just one needle. So it's one needle. You stitch how I've shown you through the cap out to the top of the weft, round twice. Double knot. Till you get to this side and make sure that this side matches this side in terms of gap. I mean, how far you've taken the weft up. So what you want to do is do like a nice, <laughs> you want to do a nice semicircle that will hold your head. Okay, so I right, I will try. So spacing, I like to do my spacing close together. You know me. But if you want to do your spacing far apart, you can. But don't make it too far because the the feather is the looser the wig is on the head. Whereas you want the wig to feel fitted, not tight fitted. So try as much as possible to maybe you leave a finger and a half at most gap between your stitching. So I like to do finger. Finger, 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 finger. But because we don't have enough time, you can do maybe a finger and a half or two fingers in between every stitching. So two fingers in between every stitching should be sufficient. So once we've done that, so we're going, we're going into the weft, then no, pick the wig. No, the weft, going into the weft was just to start it off so that it's secure. Once you've done this two stitching to secure it, you can go into the cap, out of the cap, over the weft, wrap it around twice and pull it. So you're basically like holding, securing the weft to the cap, but you're not going through the weft. You're only going through the ah. weft. You've got it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got that. I will first, can I see your own wig, please? Can I see what you're doing? I will first. Sir. Florence, I can't see what you're doing. Do you have your tools there? Are they Shola? Are they Wumi? I need to be sure you're learning something. She said she was at work. Oh, yeah, okay. That she would look at it later. All right. Sure. So are we, are we going round now? Let's go round. I'm 
between it. I just, I'm just looking at it. I want to ask a question, please. Hello. Yes, sorry, I'm coming. Okay. So how are we getting on? It's okay. I want to ask a question, but if you are teaching the back, are we cutting it or we are turning it zigzag or what? At the back. At the back. Like the follow, at the... follow the cap. So you've started your stitching here. Your cap does a, like a semi. Okay. So just follow the cap all the way okay. to you meet the other okay. side of the cap. But your width that you're taking it up okay. you match this side. So if you only take it up here, you should only take it up here on the other side. So what you're trying to do okay. is give a nice semicircle that will hold the back of your head. Okay. So oh, I, need, I, need, I don't need to cut it into pieces. You don't need to, what, sorry? Do I, need to, do, I, do I cut it into pieces? Or I do it at, no, 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 we'll come to that, just, so by the time you finish, you should finish stitching and this should be like hanging, still like this. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, okay, that's what I want to know, thank you. you. Get there. Okay, let okay. me see. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. She's a lot younger today. Just catching on everything. Once you finish your stitching, let me know. Should end up like should end up like this. How's everyone getting on? How's everyone getting on? Are we finished? Almost. Almost. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll try as much as possible to get as close to the top. That's why we price wig very high because you see the handwork that goes into it. It's a lot of handwork. It's not easy. So with the pins, you can put it, but once you get the pin, you can remove it, stitch, take it out, remove it, stitch, take it out, but it's just to hold it so you know where you're stitching. Um, so you don't have to even, now that stitch here, yeah, I can take the pin out because the hair is secure. Can I ask a question, please? Yes. You know, when we when we put the needle into the cap, 
I'm and then we put it under the weft. Yes, it's so not going into the cap again, is it? No, it should be going into the cap at all times because you're, you're attaching the head to the cap. So would it, so when you put um so the reason I showed you that those two stitching I at the think top, I'm doing the right thing. I think so. <laughs> the reason I told you those two stitching at the start is to secure your weft so that your weft is nice and secured on before you start the main stitching now. So it's just it's always good to try and secure so that if anything happens, because what weft tends to do at the um when it gets older, it tends to fray at the end. So if it's the stitching is inside rather than out, if it frays, it still kind of secures. So I always start my two, my any new weft with two stitches to secure it and close it off. Oh, I, I haven't done the other side. I've only done the beginning. Okay. Is that right? Let's keep going. So by the time we finish, your, your wig should be looking like this. Should be looking like this. You should have done this all the way, just like a half circle. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so let me know. But one side isn't properly secure, right? Yes, but by the time you finish, everything should be secure. Your whole left, okay. right. So keep going till you do that. Then we'll not do the markings on the wig. Can I ask you to please, um, you know the first bit where we secure the wig? Can you mm -hmm. show that again? I'll show that. I think I'll do a video for um, the thing because yeah, I've... Yes, I'm, I'm doing a wig at home, so I'll do that for the wig and I'll show okay. you. Thank you. But I, I don't want to take us backwards because we need to. She wants to complete wig by three o'clock. Miracles have happened. So. No one you're teaching beginning and thing. Yeah, no, Okay. Okay. Who's ready for us to take it to the next next level? Okay, those who are finished. Finish good. No, no. Those who are, those people are fin those who are finished. Take your white pencil. I want you to now mark your lines on the wig. Can I get white pencil? Okay. So what you're going to do once you've done your first. You're not going to mark where exactly you're going to be showing your, your, those who are finished, those who are still stitching, carry on stitching. So you're going to mark. So once I get here, I'm going to mark where I'm taking the, the next weft. This is a good, I don't do this, but this is a good step for beginners because it helps you stay in line with where you're stitching and it may help you keep you on track. Because I've been doing wigs for so long, I already know where I'm going with everything. So it's good to you draw your line. I'm coming, sorry. You draw your line so that you know your next stitching is going on this line. And you do that until you get to the top. So you will do all the lines till you get to the top. How much spacing do we leave between each line? It's up to you. Um, you can ask, don't leave too little space because it makes the wig really tight. So try and leave at least your minimum space should be this, which is like the length of your minimum space can be like the length of your fingernail, your this fingernail, but you can make it more like than that. looks like an inch. Yeah. So your min. Let me measure it properly. Sorry, I should be doing this measuring properly. So your minimum can Two be centimeters. A, yeah, your minimum can be one centimeter. Your minimum can be two cent, one to two centimeters should be your minimum. Um, and then you can make it four meters, four centimeters, five centimeters. But the thing is, the more gappy it is, it's not going to look very full. So try, but because we're run, well, we don't have enough time. You can make it as don't make the gap too big though. You want the wig to lay nicely. So I will say maximum four centimeters, four centimeters maximum between each gap, please. Maximum. So that means you can go less than that maximum. In inches, that is 1.5 inches max. 
That means that's the largest your gap can be. If you want to make it smaller than that, it's possible to make it smaller than that, please. Or well, maximum, I don't want to see more than 1.5 inch because it just makes the wig not very full. And then it's, it's harder to hide the gaps when you have bigger gaps. If the gaps are smaller, it's easy for the next hair on top to hide the next gap, to hide the next gap, to get to the closure. So all you're going to do is mark. So after this one, I want to probably take it here. Where do you start the marking? On top of the way you finish the first. Okay. So if you finish it here, you should start your marking here. Because I'll show you how to fold over and land on that land, on that line here. Yeah. So I'm going to do. Which one will finish in Birmingham? Which one will finish in Birmingham? Will finish in Birmingham? I can. I can. Explain that and, and do at the same time because people ask some questions. It doesn't have to be neat, but as long as it's as straight as possible so that you because once you start sewing, you cover the line, so it doesn't have to be your best driven line ever. Just make sure it's not it's as straight as it possibly can can be. <laughs> as if you're doing, you're sewing on your cameras, it should be the line on your cameras. Try and line up your your cameras. So say if you're doing a wig on someone's head now. You should try and line the back up on the cumbers as much as possible. But obviously, this training is for making a wig for somebody, not doing it on somebody's head. So, for those who are finished, I just want you to line up your cap like this. So, me, I'm lining up mine now, and this is the lines where I will sew the next, the next few tracks. So, like roughly, how many lines would we have in total? As much as it takes to finish the closure, to bring your closure, your weft up to your closure, to meet your closure. Okay. I can, uh, so I said, let's say, let's say, um, you have um some hair left. Can you then go back and still slot it in? Yes, you can go back and slot it in if you have hair, or you can go back and sew on top of wefts you've already done. Or if you have any hair left over, chances are it's very unlikely for you to have hair left. If you have hair <laughs> left, like this big, normally, but um, if you do, you can always go back and add. It's still possible. I can see. No, you shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, this one is inside. Yes. Is that right? You might not use you might not use Yeah, so if you so where you put it now, you might not use the It's not just the one that you put on just okay. There's no other. Yeah. So yeah, some you want to mark. Okay, so yeah, that's fine. Over here. So you're you're like you can see here, my marking is not. It's a curve to straight line. So you go from your curve. I'll show you how to get to your straight line from your curve. So just mark straight lines from where you finish your hair. And I'll show you how to get to the straight line. It's fine. So I do a fold over method. Some people like to cut and then start stitching again, but I do fold over. So if you want, I can show you fold over. The reason why I do a fold over method is because if the wig is old and I decide, you know what, I want something fresh, I can take off the weft of the wig and do a brand new wig with the weft. But if you start cutting off, you'll not be doing kind of like a jigsaw to try and kind of, okay, this piece, okay, this piece is long enough to go here. So I tend to do fold over. I will show you how to do fold and make sure that it's not bumpy. Some people may want to cut. If you want to cut, you can go ahead and cut where you finished your stitching. But I, to me, I prefer fold over. The way I do my fold over, it lays very flat. So I will show you guys that. Um, 
As I was saying, I do the fold over method. Um, so some people like to cut, if you want to cut, you can cut it and start, but I do fold over with and fold it over there. And I'll show you guys how to do so that it's nice and flat so that that allows me to use the bundles again another time. Let's say in a year's time, I've decided, you know what, I'm not feeling this. I want to make this into a, a frontal wig that blonde that I can now undo the wig and then use the the bond the, the uh, west the only bit that will be cut will be my bit that is closer to my front so because it's i can still do fold over there but it's i prefer i think it looks flatter if we start cutting from when we reach like here so only your front bundles will have been cut which the cut won't be anything extravagant where you're coming out with loads of little pieces it'll just be maybe three pieces that are just short is everyone good with that is everyone happy to do the fold over method yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let me know when you finish marking your wig and we'll, we'll start the fold of a method. How are you doing? Sorry, I can't catch your name. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, she told me name. How I want you to go is like this. For example, we have to do it here. We have to do it here. So I'm going to cross. So yeah, and you can see it doesn't matter. You're just making a nice finish. Okay. For the other one, you will do like that. It's fine. It's fine. It's it normally like that because you start one like this and then I'm going to do it. So is that? Yes. How's everyone getting on? How's everybody getting on? We're ready. I'm ready. I want you to say something. Okay. Will you still go up there? Or yes. Stay? No, no. Really well. I, I normally really do small pieces. So you do small pieces so that you're not going to do So, sorry, we're just waiting for two more people to finish talking, then we'll get started. My own chalk will be okay. It's fine. Check this side. <laughs> okay, well, obviously, you need to follow and finish it. Yes, your chalk may be loop sided. Doesn't mean that if your chalk is loop sided, you should so loop sided. Try and make sure you do a straight line. Your chalk is just to kind of guide you. It's not that if it's wonky, you sew it like this. You have to just follow it through, follow it through, and make sure it's lining up nice and straight and neat. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we're going to go. Okay, just one minute. 
up, up to the closure. So make sure your, your mind's not done because obviously I'm, I'm teaching. So once you just make sure your, your chalk goes all the way to your closure. So your last chalk should be like here. The chalk line should be here because the next line will be the where we're sewing just behind the closure. <laughs> this is not up to the closure. No, oh, no, no, we should I, do it up to the yes, closure. Yes, I said I can't do because I'm teaching them up and down, but, um, so I can't do it. So don't worry. Sorry. This is why when you price your wig and you, somebody says, ah, it's too much, you can explain to them that the way that goes into this, ma'am, is very, it's a lot. <laughs> It's a guide for you to know where you're going to be serving, but it's not. Okay, so fold over method. Let me do another thread. It has finished, so I'll show you how to insert a new thread. If you run out of threads, just finish off the other one by push, doing the same stitching, but instead of going over this um, weft, you go into the weft, finish it off, tie it, tie it, and then do like a and then close it off if you finish a thread. If you've not finished, you can keep going till you run, run out of thread. So I'm going to quickly stitch mine so I can show you guys how to fold over your weft so that it's reusable. So now that I have this, I should still go around and use that. No, I'm coming. I'm going to show you how to. Yeah, you still use it for your next web. So the only time you should cut your thread is when you it's finishing. Besides that, or you finish the wig. Besides that, you keep using the thread till it gets to a point where you can't pull any longer. So I'll be finishing up this thread very soon. Um, Hey guys, just to let you know, I have to leave now, but okay. I'll watch the video for the rest. Um, it's Josephine. So, okay, no yeah. problem. Thanks very much. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Oh, thank you. Oh, and the heat out there, the heat is It's making me sweat. Tell me what the problem is. You're cool. At the start, uh, you don't need to look like this. It's not 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 like so I'm just about to finish this thread. So I will show you what I do to finish it off. So I've done my last stitching. If I go again, it's not gonna allow me to go around twice. So what I do is cut, cut just at the edge. Can everyone see? Cut just at the edge of the needle right here. enough space to tie. So I separate the two pieces of thread. I tie it. Like I'm just doing, like I'm tying uh, my shoelaces, just tie once, twice, three times if you need to. So you should be left now with like a little tower of knots. Okay, then can everybody see? I've tied it three times. I've separated the thread and I've gone, just tied it like this. I'm gonna show you again. Once I, I will now, 
tie it again, but looping it around my finger and bringing it through like this. So that. So that I have a knot, a secure knot, and I make it as tight as possible and as little. There you go. And then I cut it. I don't cut it too close to where I've knotted it just because it's going to unravel, but I cut it like here so that it's it's small, but it's still kind of secure. Sister Titi did a video, so she sent that for everybody because I know it's hard to see that online. So I've done that. So I'm going to show you how I start a new thread onto your hair when I'm. And see, may need to do another video for that. So I'm threading a new needle and I'm going to add it on. I've just finished my previous needle, so I want to add on. Sorry. It's a needle special. I'll try the new one for the person. Okay, so I'm adding a new thread in. So what I do is secure it to the cap. This your cap is special. Secure it to the cap. Go through the weft so that the thread is secure through the weft. And like I did when I started it off again, where's my, okay, where's my thread? I go through thread. That's my first secure stitching. And then I take it again through the cap and then through the weft again to secure it for the second time before I now start my stitching. So we need to make it, try and make it as tight as possible. If it's not tight, I, I can un loosen it up a little bit to make it tighter. So loosen it up and I'm gonna Alice. tighten it up. So it's nice and tight, then I can now do my normal stitching. Uh, okay, so two stitches, then I'll show you how to fold over, and then you will now start following your line stitching, following your line stitching. Okay, so let me quickly. Our training now. If what else? Mm -hmm. Your voice is shaming my thing. No, I'm, oh, we should be sewing the ram. No, 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 I'm not sure them fold over here. Oh, okay. No, 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 come, 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 come. I'm not sure. Fold over. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm sure. Fold over. The fold over. Then we now. Can I come and look at the fold? And now she will now we do the second layer. Okay. So this is my last stitching on this line. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you how to fold over. So when I'm doing my last stitch, I always try and make sure I stitch on where the band is. Because if you look on your dome cap, there should be a band underneath. Mm -hmm. I always make sure I stitch at the edge or as close to the edge as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's where you're making sure that the wig, the hair is coming right to the edge of the cap. So it's covering the full. So I finished my last stitching on here. Mm -hmm. To secure it, I always tip in because if you don't tip in, it starts to move and be fidgety. So I always tip in it. Mm -hmm. Just above here, I will now okay. get select where I want this new okay. new line of track to start. Okay. I want it to start here, so I'm gonna take it here and then I'm gonna fold over. But when I'm folding over, I'm making sure that the gap. The section I'm folding over is as minimal as possible to be able to reach here and be tight across it. So, a bit of a struggle, so I, I don't know. So let me do it like this way. 
So I'm selecting. So it's better to bring it, your needle up here. So I'm up. Select where you want to sew, where you want to okay. start your new track. Okay. Select it like this. Make sure you're, you're gripping the rubber band underneath the dome cap. Okay. Put, so you're not bending the hair, but you're making it as minimal, using it as minimal as possible. Minimal as possible, enough that it spreads over and spreads over tightly. Okay. Go in between the weft, hook twice over, okay. and then you pull it. Okay. So by the time you've ended up, you've ended it like this, okay. and then you tack it with a T, the T, a T pin. So I fold it over, but it's nice and flat. It's not bumpy. So I T pin it like this, and then I now start my new line. Okay. So you see it's flat, but it's folded over. So, so if you need starts, me, so now start sewing here. Yeah, and now start sewing here, and, and then in, fold over again. again. Okay. Okay. So I know we're not going to finish this week today. So what I want everybody to do is, wherever we finish, I want you to complete it to your last line, and then I will send Antitity a video of me finishing off from where the closure, and then you can now finish your closure with my video. But what I want us to do is, wherever you get to here. As your practice at home, get up to the last line of chalk that you've, you've done, and then I will send a video on how to finish off your wig, then you can finish it off. That's okay, isn't it? So everybody, the fold over method, have you put the fold over method on the group? So fold over method is on the group. So fold over your weft and now follow your lines through, folding over, follow your lines through, and to you get to your last line, which should be around here. And then I will send the video on how to finish off the wig. And then you have your brand new wig and I'll show once you finish where you how to tie it off, how to cut underneath so that it's transparent. And then I'll send all that to the city in the video. So I'm gonna leave you guys to continue sewing because I know the class will be rounding up very soon. So continue sewing on your lines, but making sure it's straight and neat. No, if your lines are, don't follow the line. <laughs> it's a guideline of where to sew. Thank you. I believe we've had a nice time today so far. Can, uh, can, yeah. we just, can we just turn on our camera? I want to see how far some of us have gone. What have you done today? So, because I don't know the situation that says we are wasted time. This is mine. That's a good one. Well done, Shola. Well done. Well done. That's my lace bro. Good. So I'm so proud of myself. So I, I hate doing hair. So. Anything today? Um, Adeshola. Anybody else have done something? Uh, who sent the message? Yes. Okay, Stavicki so said yes. Yeah. Okay. Adeshola is at work, but watch your message. All right. So um, we're gonna send the video out, but normally when you um, when you start making it. Before you know it, you actually get to finish it on time. And the more you practice, the more you get, the faster you become. And then next week, next week, hopefully, please get your machine ready. Can we next week when we're coming, please let's come with our machine. So we have use machine. Yes. So. Uh, we have to buy that. I please get because we are going to practice how to actually go about it. Especially these lines that you make, they are guidelines. When you now start sewing with machine, the guideline is very, very important because that is what you trace. That's why it's that's why most tailors use it because you will have lines where you want to sew, and then you just follow through and sew with your machine. Hopefully, um, it might, it might be the, the class might not be here when else you are doing it. It might just be um, it can be at my place at my place so that we can have a proper machine to use. And then if you have your own machine, please come yeah, with it. So we do, we'll work with machine next class. I'll let us know when. It might be before our actual next class, but I'll do um, something and send it over for everybody to, to see what it's like. So, well done, guys. I keep showing the door. So, sorry. So if next week we're sewing with the machine, does that mean we need a um, new cap, new hair? Hopefully, yes, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> it's for you to learn. So, so okay. with your hands. 
when you make with machine, you, you sew faster. Like I just got a new machine now that like it's very, very easy. Yeah. Short, you just close your eyes and be sewing. So it, it makes it a bit faster when you actually get a machine to sew. Not like all this turning and turning and doing that the machine is sewing. Yeah, I'm just at the front of my laptop. Yeah. So we don't want to be able, be able to teach everybody ways that we can actually get these things done and make our life easier while we're even doing it. So that's good. So please keep sewing, don't log out. So keep sewing, it's not three o'clock yet. I want us to so please do the turning in case you have any question. Ask now. Do that. We didn't, we didn't see the turning until you sent until you send us the video. We, it wasn't I've there sent, I've online. Sent I've sent it already. It's already in the group. Uh, I tried just now. It wasn't there. It's it's no, it hasn't come through yet. That it hasn't come, come through yet. Oh, uh, OK. Oh. Yeah, it's taking time for it to come. Most of the videos are not dropping yet. The signal here is this. It's like clothing thread. I gave her a book. So, what you find in the sewing machine? No, it's still cheating. It's more than the cheating. I don't know. It's more than the cheating. So, what I'm buying a machine. Not just pin weaving the The machine, you've seen the machine. So the mm -hmm. the machine, do you have to specify for sewing weeks or just mm -hmm. machine? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So can you ask for clothes? Yes. How much is it? I've seen it not too bad. Very mm -hmm. uh, expensive. Right? You get machine. Did you see ten thousand pounds? Yeah. It wasn't too much then. Mm -hmm. sure. But I was thinking, do I need the machine? Do I need the machine? Do you want to see the turning again? I can see Shola is very concentrated. She's concentrated to. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay, I can do it on my laptop. You can see Joe. Yeah. Do it here and hold the this thing. I've sent it to the group, but it's not dropping yet. Okay, let me do it on my laptop. I need this whole slow. Okay, you can see it. I need the seats. I'm afraid on my laptop. I don't like it. I stand between the seats. No, I need it. You bring the camera. Hey, you bring the camera to where I'm sitting. Let me get it. It's that long. So this is the turning again. So what I'm about to do is add a new thread. So I'm gonna show you until you're gonna make sure you feel tight at the back. So it's holding, it doesn't matter. It I'm adding a brand new thread to the cap. So I'm taking it in, taking it through the weft. Hooking it through the double threads to secure it. Okay, so that's my first stitching. Sorry, the reason why it's taking me long is I need to make sure that it's nice and tight and it doesn't want to. Okay. I'm taking it to the, it's quite loose. So what I'm gonna do is take this tip in now and tip in it so that it's quite pulled. So I've done my first thread, I've secured it. I'm gonna secure it again through second time through the weft. But this time I'm going around it, knotting it twice, pulling it out. Then I'm now at the end. So at the end, I'm taking it right to the end of the cap. 
and then through the weft so that it's nice and it makes it nice and flat when it's through the weft rather than over it when you're at the end. So now for the fold over. So for the fold over, my thread is my thread is here. It's coming out of this part of the of the cap. So what I'm going to do is find where I want to start my new line, take into the cap, out of the cap again, into the cap, out of the cap again. So my needle is sticking out where. See my needle sticking out. Then I'm going to bring the hair over, fold it over, but I'm making sure that the, the gap between where it's folded is not a lot. So I'm basically folding it over, taking it through the weft. So can you see where my needle is now? It's through the cap, out of the cap, through the weft, the folded weft. So I folded the weft over, circle it around again twice. and then I pull. So what now happens is, it's taking the folded closure up to the next line for me, but it's still flat, can you see? I don't know if you guys can see. It's still flat, but it's folded over because I've pushed, I've pushed it through the, the um, in the weft of the bundle rather than around it. So it's holding it flat. I tip in it now and then I continue sewing. So it's nice and flat. So you can see it's flat. Did everybody kind of get that? So I think so with the way Shola is looking. I think so. Are you sure? It's very. But the thing is, over the years, as we practice, you will develop your own way your own of way, doing yeah. it. Like if I want to tip yeah, my. I, 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 I don't do that. You understand? So there are different ways that you can add, but the, the most important target is that it must be flat. Yes. So by right. times I run my own, I run it up that, I run it at the edge up and then turn it over. By the time I turn it over the edge here, I pin it down and I, I, and I sew it in again, and then I continue. Mm -hmm. So it depends on you, how you find it easy, but the main aim is that it must be flat. So that when you run your hand through it like this, it's flat like this week that I made last night now. So that when you do this, you kind of enjoy it. You enjoy it. <laughs> it feels good in your hand. It feels like your hair. So when anybody wears it, I'm like, ah, ah, ah. So so if, if you don't want to fold over, you can cut, but make sure that as you're cutting, you're yeah. passing your needle through the weft and secure it properly before you not cut off where you want to cut off your weft. Just make sure your weft is secure on the cap before you do any cutting. So those who don't want to fold over, but just decide that, you know what, I prefer to just cut. It's easy to just cut through as well. But you just have to make sure you're securing the weft before you cut. Okay, um, I think I'll, by the time I watch over the video again, um, just be able to have a look and have a good practice. And the lighting here is not very great. So when I get home, I'll do another video for you people as well. Send it. Um, the video still hasn't come through the group. Oh, the video still hasn't come through the group as well. I saw another one on that. Yeah, later.